So I started doing this video on a, a DLP TV teardown. It's this uh, 65 HM167 uh, TV made by Toshiba. And I thought, okay, with all this stuff, you know, that's inside of it, because there's really not that much. And, you know, there are some boards and the projection unit and all this stuff. And I didn't think it was going to be that much video. I thought maybe like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, you know, maybe getting close to two or something like that. But as I started working on it, and you know, recording stuff and kind of discovering what was all inside of this thing. I'm already more than three hours. Three hours worth of video that I've already shot. And that's just the raw video. That's not like the edited content or anything, because obviously, you know, it's, it's gonna be a little less than the actual amount of video that I record. But there's like so much to look at that I didn't think <laughs> there was gonna be to look at. So I've decided that instead of like trying to make like one huge video, I'm just gonna split it up into sections, uh, kind of like for your sanity so that, you know, there's not like this one huge video to watch. And also because like me trying to upload a big video like that is gonna be like big headache. I already have a hard enough time with some of the stuff that I do because I don't really have a, a great internet connection or anything. So there's been a few times, I mean, you wouldn't know this because you're not the one uploading, but uh, there's been a few times when I've uploaded a video, realized that I, totally screwed something up, had to delete it, and, you know, re-upload, and then, you know, that takes me a while to do, so I decided, you know, to avoid all the headache, I'll just uh, work on, like, a section at a time, you know, try to keep it maybe between, like, 30 to 45 minutes per piece, and, you know, I'll try to, like, focus, like, on one thing at a time, so that, you know, it's not, like, all jumbled together or anything, but, uh, with all that said, uh, let's just uh, get into it, and uh, enjoy. All right, we're pretty much just gonna jump into this, but this is an old Toshiba 65 HM167 DLP TV. And the TV actually works, but it needs a new bulb. So, um, we have no need for it. This was actually given to me because it was kind of bad. So we're just gonna take it apart here and we're gonna take a look at what's inside. Uh, the chassis pretty much is all this thing right here. So we're gonna remove some screws here that hold this chassis in place. And with a lot of these TVs, like basically, this whole chassis just comes right out and you can have access to everything that's in there. So I've already kind of produced any screws uh, here for the kid. He's going to help me. Um, he has no idea what uh, pre-loosening means. So <laughs> I just make it easier for him to take off. So you're going to take these off right here. Look, you're going to take this one off, that one, that one. So go take them off. Uh, you don't need to take that one off yet. You can take these off right here. Okay, you gotta, yeah, you gotta spin it the right way for it to come off. Come on, man, I'm beating you. You haven't even taken one off. Look, I already have six. Okay, you got one. Okay, get the other one down there. And then this one right here. Okay, take that one. I'm like that. Yeah, it's going on the right way. Okay, good job. All right, here we have it. And got okay, one. thank you. All right, so we've taken off eight, screw eight, seven, nine screws here. So now I think that should allow this whole thing to come off. Okay, watch out. I'm gonna see if we can clean this up. Um, appears to be a little clip right there. Looks like there's some clips in some areas here that. Oh, there's one more screw right here. You want to take that one off? Yeah. Okay, take it off. And this one off. All right, you can take that one off too. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's go over that. Let's take this off. Okay, so now this looks like it should come off. And, okay, there it is. So this is just a, uh, okay, let's go over that way. So it's just uh, like a little plastic frame. Cover up a bit here and now. So we got a screw here, we got a screw there. Yeah, and possibly this, these two screws right here, looks like they might be holding on this down to the rest of the case there. Okay, it's screw over. Okay, yes, it is really dirty. Yeah, and I'm not chopping it. Uh, it looks like there's nothing else holding in, so let's just do it. Got it? All right, thank you. Okay, now you need to do a scoot over. We're going to pull this out. Scoot over that way. Okay, this is going to come out in sections, apparently. So, this is one here. It's like we got to unplug a few things here. 
dirty. Yeah, it's very dirty. All right, so this TV is a little bit more difficult to take apart than I was expecting. Like some other ones, like I mentioned, like this whole thing comes out. But I managed to kind of get this thing here. Um, quite a ways out here by undoing some of these cable straps right here. So this kind of allowed this to come out a little bit. There was another clip right here. And I can stick my hand in here and loosen up some little, those little sort of like cable straps. So this is really dusty in here, but these, these little clips right here are kind of like holding this cable strap from, or this whole like sort of Whoa. assembly from coming out. So like we can undo these and look how dusty that is in there. Okay. It's filthy. And there's a cables in there that kind of run along the back that I kind of on loosen. On the back? Yeah, on the back. So these come out of these uh, sort of like little hooks right there. And there's a little fan. Yeah, there's a little fan. He's really interested in that fan. <laughs> he really wants to remove that fan. Okay, we'll take that off in a little bit, okay? Okay. In the meantime, I'm trying to get these things out of here, but I can't do it with one hand. So I'm going to set the camera down, undo these, and then maybe I can get this assembly out. And this here would be like the, the input. Like um, switching and all that stuff. Uh, right here looks like we've got a some sort of a video processor board here, and this right here would be the output going to the the light engine or the projector. This right here looks like it's a little power supply or something, maybe even audio amplifier. Um, this actually extends like all the way down here. This looks like a transformer right here in the bottom. So yeah, let's try to get this whole thing out, and then we'll take a we'll take a better look at everything once it's out of the out of the case here, or out of the set, and we'll put it on the bench and then we can take a better look at everything else. All right, so now this whole module is out. Look how filthy it is. You can see that everything's coated in a really nice layer of dust here. Daddy, and it's sunny. Yeah, it's sunny. And it's dark again. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cloudy today, so it keeps getting dark and then light and then dark and light. But anyways, yeah, there's a lot of dust on this thing. Okay, so this set of cables here that comes off of all the stuff from this board, there was this big yellow one that plugged into here. Looks like this is the power supply for the for the light engine over here. So this should looks like it should just come out. Move this out of the way here. Excuse me. Okay, and there we can see there's our lens, and even that's filthy. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah, this whole thing is nasty. And uh, in there, we can see there's a ton of dust, and and even in here, Let's see if we can pull this out a little bit more there. But yep, that is our projector, and oh, that's a pretty large fan right there. So maybe that's uh, the culprit of what's been pulling in all this oh. dust in here. So you can see that's a uh, pretty filthy itself. And there's something like that. Yeah, please don't touch that, okay? I already touched it. Yeah, a lot of dust on this thing. So this is where the lamp Look, is. Hey, hey, there's a big fan. Yep, that's another big fan. Yeah, so this is where the lamp is. Fan. So this fan here is for cooling that lamp because those lamps are what pretty are hot. Fans? It's like 100 and something watts, I think. Uh, at least like 150, I believe, if not more. And then up here, we have a like a thermal cutoff. So I guess if it gets too hot, like say from the fan being blocked or whatever, then this would shut off and remove power to this power supply here. Looks like this is the, yeah, basically this is for the for the lamp. So we've got the two wires coming off here. They kind of snake over here to that connector and that's where the lamp plugs in. So it's like a little HID lamp. This little board right here appears to be the, the controller for this power supply. So there's like a little thin couple of Thin cables here, it's going off to the to the rest of the the controller, like on on this side over here. So we're gonna give this a really good a cleaning with uh, some air the air compressor, and then we're gonna take a better look at it. The rest of these cables right here, some go off to the speakers, and then some go off to the front panel, and then some go off to the the little side here where there's a some inputs. So that's all that is. All right, just to spare everybody the agony of watching me remove a million screws, I've already taken off all the rest of the screws that were in the back here, and it looks like this whole like front bezel part here should just come off. 
or something. Yeah, it looks like it looks. You can see the rest of what's inside of this thing. This side came out, but this side has not yet. And looks like maybe something else is holding it in the middle portion there. I'm not too worried about this uh, staying intact or anything because, like I said, it's not, not fixing anything. Okay, looks like maybe there's a couple more screws I need to remove from, from the bottom there, so I'll be right back. Okay, there's no, there's no more screws in the back. Turns out this little thing here pops out. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, there's that. It looks like uh, I've got three little light pipes right here. And there are, I guess there were supposed to, oh yeah, there's some LEDs on here in the bottom. And then there's two screws right there. So those are the two that come out. All right, now this whole thing here should just come off. And there we go. So these here is like our big uh, Fresno, Fresnel, however you pronounce it, lens. So it's this huge thing. So the image comes out of this hole right here where the projection lens is. This little cutout here, there was like a few sensors there that we're going to see once we get on the bench. And then back here, we have our, our big uh, mirror. So image comes out of here, reflects. <laughs> That's funny. This makes it, makes it look kind of weird. But anyway, image comes here, reflects off of here and onto the, the back of this. So that's how the image uh, gets magnified so much in such a small little space. So basically the, the lens on that thing is like a, like a really short throw lens because we only have like, like from here to here, there's maybe like a foot. And then from here to here, maybe like another foot. So like about two feet of distance. And you know, you project like a big, uh, I think it was just like 62 or 65 or something inch uh, image from there. So yeah, kind of interesting stuff. Another thing about this mirror here is that it's not like a uh, regular mirror that you'd have like in your bathroom or something. It's a uh, surface mirror. So if you look right here on the side, you can see that there's no, like you don't see the, the glass right there. That's because the, the reflective surface is like, you know, it's on the surface. So the mirror itself is actually, it's pretty thick on this one. I haven't, I don't think I've ever felt one that was this thick. So well, we can take that off and take a look at it later, but yeah, basically that's all that's inside of here. And there's actually a couple layers on here. So we got the lens and then below it is uh, usually like a, it kind of looks like a polarizer. There might only be two like layers on, on this, but this one has some really small speakers. Look at that. So that's uh, the whole box right there. Actually, oh, never mind. So this right here, it's got, yeah, so here's the speaker and then here's a little tweeter. So this right here would be like the, the little speaker box and you know, that's where you get your audio. But I removed all the screws from these brackets here that hold the, the lens down. So there's one here. There's a, another one here, and these are just plastic. The one up here at the top, though, feels a little more solid, and it's not quite coming in. Okay, I guess it's because it's got a groove right there. So it should have come out here in the bottom, and these things are kind of in the way. Okay, these just uh, unhook here, so we'll take all these off. All right, so there's a uh, one layer of our screen. So that is the, the lens assembly right there. As you can see, single lens. And then the second layer, yeah, this only has two layers, is uh, sort of like a diffuser. So this uh, kind of helps like soften up uh, the image, at least from what I can tell, so that it, it doesn't look like too sharp. So this uh, portion here just kind of helps soften it a bit. And, uh, it's got some grooves on it. If I run my finger across it like that, you can kind of hear it. So, yep, yeah, that's that's all that's on there. So here's something I didn't notice until much later, but that strip that's down here on the bottom with the status LED light pipes, uh, it actually is labeled, it says lamp and then power. The third one is not labeled, but I did find the service manual for this and I think it said that that one was status. So that one apparently only uh, lights up or something if there's something wrong with the set. I think that's what kind of gives you like an error code or whatever. Uh, I haven't quite looked at it like thoroughly yet, but I think that's what it might be for. 
So anyways, the strip down here doesn't need to be yanked out. It actually has these sort of like push clips that you like push in and then they snap on and snap off. So then that comes out just like that. And uh, that's those uh, little tabs right there. And then the actual fastener is like uh, right in there. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it here. It's kind of bright, but it's that right there. So yeah, to put it on and take it off, it just goes in there and then uh, gets pushed back into place just like that. There were a few more screws to remove from the front here, but this whole section here looks like it will come out now. And the speakers are hidden underneath that. Uh, there was one screw holding this in place here. This is the, the LEDs up here in the front. So there's uh, two, just a single color LEDs here. I'm assuming one's green and the other one's probably red or something. And then there's a bicolor one here. That's probably for the lamp. Because a lot of the times these TVs like don't indicate, you know, like green for a for the lamp is fine or working or whatever, and then red if it detects like a failure with the lamp. So I'm assuming that's what that one's for. It doesn't really tell you in the front either, so I don't know. But I think that's what it's for. Okay, so yeah, this this whole thing is just sliding out of the front here. Actually, this side might be a little tricky because that's where the oh there it goes. So there we go. So there's our speakers. There's one right here. See the wires kind of running through the back there. That's the connector for the front. Here's the other set of speakers. And that's our little side panel there with our power button and volume and channel and all that stuff. And then the interface and the side there for video inputs. So really not a whole lot of else to see in here. So I think that's pretty much as far as we're gonna go here other than like removing the, the, the mirror. But I mean, <laughs> not like you've never seen a mirror before. Well, another interesting thing, this whole piece here on the bottom actually turns out that it's a separate piece from the back while well, I was trying to remove these right here to try to free up all these cables because they, they ran them underneath. I noticed that this started coming apart so I can push this forward. can't really do it with one hand. But anyways, yeah, so this whole bottom tray is another separate piece from the back. Go figure. And for any speaker fanatics out there watching this, this is what we have. These uh, sort of elongated oval like shaped speakers. They are 12 ohms and uh, it says nominal 10 watts, max 15 watts. I'm guessing that's going to be the model number speaker 1488. Oh, and it's got VO. What else here? And those are the little tweeters. Son. A lot of this stuff here looks like it's just like popped into place. This side panel here just looks like it's just gonna pop out of there. Okay, got one side, got another. There we go. So yeah, I just had some clips holding it in there. So there we go. That's our video input. All of our buttons for control. S video. Really not a whole lot of this. Basically, it's just a an interface board. There's like no electronics or anything on these. Just the little push buttons right there. Little tech switches. They do have a this ground connected here that then goes to a ring terminal here that's screwed onto this whole metal plate there. Oh, it's actually the buttons. So that that this whole plastic strip back here, those are the buttons. So they're kind of like coated in some like chrome stuff to make them, I guess, a bit conductive. And I guess that's to prevent like static damaging anything. So I'm guessing they thought that these were you know, maybe too sensitive or something that they decided they needed to, to ground all the buttons. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before in any TV. So, hmm, kind of neat, I guess. In case you've never seen these before, all these like sort of like little tower things with these little balls on the end, basically what these are for is they're like cable guides. So your cable would go in between these like that. And, uh, then all they do is twist these like that so that they hold the, the cable in place and then it, it can't come out. So you twist them, you twist the balls like that and it locks the cable into place. And so now you've got this like sort of like a neat and a tidy way of just keeping the cables like going off to where you need them to go. And it keeps them away from other things and it keeps them from you know, they don't need to have like a zip tie holding them in place, so, and then they're easy, easy to undone, so you just twist it the other way, or easy to undo, easy to undone. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, yeah, easy to undo. You just twist them the other way, and then your cable can come right out for, like, you know, ease of service and stuff. It's a mirror. Yep, that's a mirror. Yeah. So, I just discovered one more thing on the bottom of this while I was moving it, is that they had this metal, it's basically sort of like extruded aluminum bar, like, going all the way across here. It was screwed in. So, I guess they just wanted this for, like, some extra protection against this uh, plastic, like, flexing too much, and, you know, just to provide a little bit of stability. So... That's this right here. You can see. I guess this could be neat for using like a like a heat sink or something. I don't know. But not bad. It is it's pretty hefty. It's not like really, really weak aluminum or anything. It's it's actually pretty strong. So that's kinda cool. I almost missed this warning right here. It says intense light source to prevent eye damage, do not look in the lens. And yeah, it's it's uh said in the front that it's a hundred and fifty watt lamp, so it's quite a bit. Yeah, I would could do some damage, I suppose. And the last thing I could possibly remove from the back there is the mirror. And as you can see, okay. surface mirror, you can see that the reflective surface is uh, on the surface, once again. <laughs> and it's this glass is really thick. It's like, I would say it's like almost a quarter, maybe, maybe like uh, three eighths thick there. So it's pretty thick, and you can see that it's basically it's reflective on on both sides because the the surface, you know, on this side is visible through the other side there, and it's not not coated with anything. So pretty, pretty, really hefty mirror. Before we take all this stuff to the bench, we're gonna blow as much of the dust as we can off of this. Anytime I've opened up one of these things, they're always like super coated in dust. So, um, yeah, we're going to give it a good cleaning, otherwise I'm going to get all this crap on the bench. Um, not saying that I've taken a bunch of these things apart, but um, yeah, feel free to ignore all those projection tubes in the back there. <laughs> Alright, so, alright, we've got our air nozzle over here. I've already removed the lamp, so I just got that sitting here to the side. Let's watch the dust fly in. It's kind of windy outside today, so this stuff's going to go all over the place. And I've disconnected the, the cable from this fan going to the board just to prevent any potential like current being uh, generated by it to go into the board there and so we don't damage anything because I do want to try to power it up. But yeah, there's still a lot of dust. I know you guys probably aren't going to be able to tell, but it's been like four days since I last touched this thing. Like some other stuff came out, so I've been kind of busy. But anyways, uh, we've got it mostly clean now. There's like a little tiny layer of dust, like still kind of over everything, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was originally. So everything else is, uh, it's looking fairly clean. We've got that large layer of dust that was all over these boards out and all the, the dust bunnies. And now we, uh-oh, we missed the big one. Uh, as far as everything inside this projection TV, this is it right here. So we got all our interface boards here and our projection unit right here. Here's our status LEDs and our buttons. Uh, let's power it up and see if we can get it working here on the bench. And I've got a big piece of uh, white board on the back there. We'll see if we can project something onto it. I don't know if there's going to be very many people actually watching this on a projection TV nowadays. But um, I know at least two people that would probably would be watching this. Hi, Mom and Dad. So um, if you're not too familiar with a DLP, basically this is, this is what it is right here. We've got our interface boards over here and then we have our projection unit over on this side. So I've got everything hooked up. Let's power it up and see if we can still get it working here on the bench and we can kind of see you know, what different things uh, do here. So I'm gonna plug it in. And uh, here is our status LEDs. I don't know if these are gonna do anything at the moment. Uh, I mean, it should, so. Let's turn off this light here so we can get a better, better view of this. This yellow light here was flashing, although I'm not sure what that means. It's not really labeled on here, and it wasn't labeled on the on the TV itself either. It just says DB82. So, but yeah, basically these are all LEDs. So let's uh, hit the power button over here. Now the yellow light is flashing. Um, just heard a click. This blue LED in the middle came on. Fans are spinning. 
and uh, the lamp just uh, came on. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it there, but let's see. You can kind of see a little bit of light shining through this little crack right here. So lamp is on and uh, projector is projecting. Let me get it up here. I mean, obviously we're not going to see anything here, but that's, uh, I believe that line there, it's, yeah, you can kind of like see it shifting there. That's the line that, you know, says like no signal or whatever. So yeah, it is powered on. The little fan right here, based on its location, I'm taking a guess that that's the fan that's going to be cooling the, the actual, the DLP chip. And we'll take a look at it, um, it a better look at it uh, a little bit later here. So let me go get something to plug in. And we'll see if we can get something projected there on the on that big white board. Okay, I was hoping to do this with the lights on, but it's, <laughs> this bulb in this it set is like super weak. It's so weak that like it barely lights up anything. And um, I have a I, I got a mirror here. A mirror, yeah, you can't see it, but I'm gonna use this to reflect the light onto that board. And I'm playing one of my one of my videos on on YouTube. There, so you can see it was the last one I did on the on the needle motor so I'm just kind of using the mirror here to reflect it onto that whiteboard and yeah it's it's very dim image so yeah I wasn't kidding when I said that this, that this bulb was just um, bad so but as you can see it is working and it projects an image actually it looks like it does a better job projecting the image onto the garage ceiling here let's see if I can get it there and it yeah it's, it's very very like weak so yeah definitely would need a new bulb if I wanted to do anything useful with it but yeah at least it, it's working we can see that and if we look down at the lens there we can see that that's where the image is being projected from uh, get you closer there there we go One kind of neat thing that they've done here is that this is where the lamp assembly is. So that's where it's installed. And this is the cover that um, closes this all up. And, you know, it's also a vent. So, you know, you can feel the heat coming out of here because the fan is coming, is pulling air in from the front, blowing it through the lamp and out this way. But let me turn off this light and I'll show you something. You can see that back here where the fan is, we have a lot of light output. So that light, you know, would be kind of like inside the, the TV set. But because it's covered by that big shroud, you know, it doesn't affect... The, the image uh, being projected onto the back of the screen. But on this side, as you can see, even though there's a vent, there's hardly any light being output from the from the back of the set. Here's a white piece of paper, and as I'm kind of like running it here, you can see that we have some light like way at the bottom down here, but that's kind of like where the gap is between this uh, this vent and the, the chassis. But other than that, we see like no light output from the back here, and I'll show you guys I'll show you guys in a minute why why that is that even though this is a vent and the light bulb's right there that there's like no light really coming out of the back there. So taking this cover off, we can see that the lamp is right here and you know there would be normally like a lot of light in this area and this is the back, but as we can see, we can't see directly across the you know those um those slits on on this on this vent. And actually we can if we do this, but the whole reason why this blocks light so well is because these uh, fins right here are actually arranged something like this. So there's a fin there, you know, and then there's another fin on top there. So that basically just uh, blocks light from being able to, to escape out the back of the set and, you know, uh, outputting like a lot of light behind the, the TV set. Uh, we look in here a little bit more. There was two screws that were holding this on here. This is the... The lamp assembly and it's actually really warm right now because I just uh, shut it off like a little bit ago. There is our big lamp and this actually looks like one of the HID bulbs that you would kind of like see in a, a car headlight or something. Um, the only difference between this and one of those is that down inside there, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but way down in the bottom there, there's actually a kind of a little bit of a bulbous part down at the very base so that's like where the light is emitted and then that gets reflected outwards 